So you guys remember Craig from Kasachi back in season one and his wife Karen. <laughs> so we found out we were gonna be near Rapid City together and decided to spend the morning at a Buffalo Rodeo. <laughs> at Custer State Park. <laughs> that is so cool. That's so cool. <laughs> that is a big herd. Worth the price of big Uh-huh. Yeah. Worth every penny we paid this morning. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead. This is so awesome. <laughs> They do it once a year. They round up all of the bison and um, give them their vaccines and everything and count out the herd. Craig was nice enough to drive so we didn't have to drive. He had to get up at 4.30. <laughs> I got to sit in the back seat and just relax for a while. So that was kind of cool. You could even relax with my driving. Yeah, really? yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. It was dark out. I couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> but now, so we're going to get back in the truck, try to get out through the crowd here and See if we can make it back out of Custer State Park. That's right. <laughs> now that 18,000 of us are trying to leave a buffalo herd. <laughs> we are continuing the trek east on our way back to Mark and Celia's yeah. to go hang out for a couple days. And we're going to be stopping to stretch our legs at the Corn Palace. <laughs> I don't know what a Corn Palace is, but when we were at Mark and Celia's, Mark told us that we have to stop and check this out. And then Craig said the same thing when we just saw him at the uh, bison roundup. So we are here at the Corn Palace and we're going to go check it out and see what this is all about. Because I don't know what a Corn Palace is or would be. So. Me either, but the dog is welcome. So Yep, so it's a good leg it's stretcher. It's a good leg stretcher for all of us. Yeah. Let's go check this out. All right. Who to thunk? All right. Play basketball in the Corn Palace. So that's what the Corn Palace is. It's the town basketball arena. Decorated, decorated with corn <laughs> with everything made out of corn it's actually kind of cool <laughs> admissions free the dogs allowed so if you're passing it stop in and check it out like look at the look at the murals that are all made out of corn husks or corn corn yeah. tops that's really cool <laughs> if you've ever wondered what people do in south dakota they decorate stuff with corn <laughs> That's where the Halloween tradition came from, I guess. I guess so. Oh, look, we could have came right here. Oh, check that out. It's kind of neat. <laughs> right, so there's not a whole lot to do in there. It might Does... be one of the goofiest stops we've ever made. No, no yeah. probably not. I mean, no. we've seen the giant legs in Texas. So... And the giant ball of twine. Yeah. And, but... and the giant ball of stamps. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't say that it's bushels of fun, but... <laughs> <laughs> Look, we see what you did there. <laughs> I'm trying to be co-host with Josh Gates, but uh, it does give you a history of like why it's all there and everything like that. So. And all of the pictures of how it's been decorated every yeah. year. So it is kind of a cool little stop. Good, yeah. good leg stretcher. Can take the dog in. So yeah, perfect leg stretcher for everybody, really. Yeah, and it's right off the highway. So if you're going past it, stop in and check it out. Yeah. Stretch your legs and get back on the road. <laughs> why not? Before we get back on the road, we're going to go figure out why the truck's pulling real hard to the left. Yeah, especially right after an alignment. Well, yeah. it's been four days. Yeah, two di yeah, two new tires and an alignment was going good for 200 miles. And then now all of a sudden it's pulling to the left. So got to figure that out. On the plus side, we're on our way back to Mark and Celia's. So. <laughs> Mark, to the rescue Mark, again. <laughs> Mark, I'm going to need your shop again. So, see you in a couple days. <laughs> and, uh, we're happy to report the journey back east has been much less eventful than the journey going west. Why you gotta open your mouth like that? Well, this is, with one exception. Uh, we did just have uh, an encounter at a rest station. Yes. Which was really kind of cool. Uh, our new buddy Juan, who's a traveling nurse, on his way down to Arkansas. Yep. Uh, so we got to hang out in, in a rest stop. He said he was behind us, so the the sticker on the back of the camper and was like dude i follow you guys like and we were hanging out for a bit and chatting and whatnot so that was really really cool it was yeah. nice to just kind of meet a fan on the road <laughs> yeah and kind of hang out make a new friend and so enjoy your trip down to arkansas safe travels one hope you get there hope it's just as uneventful for, for, uh, for you, you as, as it is, is for, for us, us so, so far, far. <laughs> uh, and hopefully we'll run into you the next time we're down you know in the little rock area that'd be right. awesome you know, get together have a beer or something hang out for a little bit longer uh, dude that guy's got my same exact bumper again Dude. Everybody out here got it. This truck is a one of a kind in New Jersey. It's like it's a, a dime a dozen out here. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Everybody waves too. They <laughs> right. all think we're their buddy Bob or something. <laughs> Made it to Illinois on the trek east. Back over to Mark and Celia's house. Yeah, because we were coming back through the area. How do we not stop and see our new friends? Right. And I, like every time we pull in the driveway, it's, it's like coming home. It is. You know, it feels like <laughs> it is. 
you know, when you moved out of your parents' house or the, you know, and you went back home for the first big family <laughs> get together and just fall asleep on the couch and you know, just you don't have to worry about nothing. Right, right. <laughs> You're kind of, just kind of like at peace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Celia had to run out and do a family thing and Mark on his way out the driveway stopped at the <laughs> RV and hit Loretta with a little bit of a surprise and said, Hey, why don't you meet my meet us over at my buddy Bill's farm? And she's gonna get to ride in a combine. <laughs> it's almost as exciting as when I went skydiving. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's quite the same, but what do I know? <laughs> I get to see if it goes It's not that it's not how it works. It looks like a giant spitball launcher. It's like like more like a machine gun. <laughs> 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 Mark's not even here yet. I know, it's okay. That's why I can get this out now. <laughs> so I don't look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> look at that thing going. Just... <laughs> <laughs> look at the dog. Look at the dog in there. <laughs> he gets to do this every day. <laughs> <laughs> Is that GPS there? Yeah, we're, so we're tied to GPS. And so we're obviously mapping as we go here. So this is the whole field that we've cut. This is where we're headed for. But So then we can we can take that information and then evaluate the field. Farm equipment has the ability uh, to track all of those things, but it's uh, really and it's, fascinating. You know, and, then, and then on top of it, we're running the program too. The boys are watching us on the phone. On right. The phone. So they know exactly what we're doing too. And also you can tell them how much fuel I, you know, not that they know how much fuel I have, but but let's say I'm wondering, well, you know, wonder how much fuel is still in the combine do we need to take fuel. And then we pull right up and pull up my phone, oh man, dad's about out of fuel or something. So like they'll that. know so, before yeah, <laughs> so, whether or not you best or not. Exactly. I've always said that the technology in agriculture is as great as any other in the world. I mean, the technology is just unbelievable what we put into not only machinery, but into the genetics of the, of of the plants. Crops. Yeah. Once we get going here, the, the combine, I'll lock it in and it'll drive on us. Oh, really? So I don't have to steer. It's called auto steer, so basically it's just going straight, straight as you can be. Straight until you, drive it. Yeah. And, until you tell it. And I turn around, sure, yeah. You know, everybody's like, oh my God, you don't even steer the combine or the plant. I mean, the plant, about all the planters are auto steer now. Hmm. But what it allows us to do is, one, I can talk to you more, but I can concentrate I can on concentrate your... not only on what's going on, but watching the machine. If something's not right, you need to know right away. Right. As far as your row not working or... Otherwise you know, your whole so, field is messed yeah, up. Yeah, otherwise you mess up a lot of stuff. So. It allows us to watch the equipment more through the monitors and stuff. And it's just amazing. If you don't have to drive all day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not that I'm sitting there reading the book, but no, no, no. But, but I don't have to focus on on the steering wheel. Now on yeah. corn, we do drive corn because it is more about just following the rows. But with beans, we actually get off the rows and go on an angle, and so it makes it feed better into the head. Uh, but, so we'll just put it on an angle and let the combine drive hmm. straight. So, I, guess. I mean, the, the basics of this is so as the crop comes in, it's going up the feeder house right underneath us. Right. And then it goes into what we call the rotor. Now, does your monitor tell you when the hopper is full? Mm -hmm. Like when it's time to... It'll tell me when it's three quarters. It don't tell me when it's full. It, especially when we're in corn. The volume comes in fast enough that... Can corn you dump faster? Uh, the volume comes in faster. Okay. Because corn runs 200 bushel the acre, beans run 60. Oh, that's a significant so your, difference. Your volume coming in is much faster. Right. Therefore, you need two trucks instead of one. We can keep up with one truck hauling beans. Okay. Next to the corn. These beans are actually yielding very well. Yeah. I mean, uh, we've had some that didn't yield as well, and that's. I take it too personal, my wife says. Well, in order for these machines to stay efficient, we have to, what we call, unload on the go. And the combine never stops. He pulls in, 
And you just dump water. Uh, it goes water. to the yard, and we just keep right on it going. So this year, this farm is in beans. Next year, it'll be in corn. Okay. And then the fields that are in corn, like that one right next to us, and that one right next to us is also ours. So they'll be soy. So they'll be soy beans next year. Okay. So, um, so what we know is okay. That ground back there is. A, it's more of an orange and red, timber soil trees around it, deer. It doesn't get as much sunlight morning and night because of the shape of the trees. Right. So we just know that that part of the farm is not is going never to going to produce never the same. Never going to produce the same as this out here. From a planning standpoint, we just kind of got to accept that that's the way it's going to be. And is it worth it to keep those fields still as planting, like yeah. those, that area still yeah. as planting, instead yeah, of like converting it to uh, like woodland or something? Uh, and there's no return. Not right. You know, so when we plant, we also read the satellites, and we do what we call prescription planting. Okay. So a normal planting population for corn would be thirty-five thousand plants per acre. Okay, that's insane. <laughs> so, my planter is set up that around here, 35,000 plants per acre. Okay. Back there, when I get back in there, then it reads, it tells my planter to plant less. So, we might only plant 32,000 back there. Back there, because 30, they're not going to do as well. Because we just know that it can't handle the high population back there. Right. And, like you said, this is to keep it as efficient as possible. The yeah, tractor just keeps, pulls up next to you. Yep. And then he has the ability to go right to the semi, raises that all the way up, transfers the load on to the semi, and the semi takes it to market. And by unloading on the go, we pick up uh, 20% time. Time, time. Right, right. So, basically, four days instead of five, or five days instead of six. Right, right. Okay, that makes sense. Because I don't share the property. Like, of dollars no, no, well, buy. that's why I say that, because, I mean, land is just oh. so ridiculously expensive. Yeah. And there are some that could buy it. Well, and good it's for them, and good for them. I'm not yeah. down, I don't, yeah, but I don't want to, I don't want to hate on them too much, but, no. but I get what you're saying. I, I mean, I can't afford to, to buy hundreds of acres oh, for a right. farm. Guys in front of right there, they bought land last week, 130 acres. Oh, huh. The average price is 16000 Ouch. Yeah. What their great grandfathers put together for them. Right. So it's right. generations of big time Generational passes, money that's. Where my mom and dad basically left my grandfather with nothing. A couple tractors and came down here and started with nothing. Right. So over the years, they did very well to purchase some farm ground, and I've been able to buy a little bit. Right. And know. hopefully your sons will be able to and, buy more. Yep. Yep. So, so we've put together. We own about yeah, all of us together now. Mom, my mom's still alive. I lost my dad two years ago. Okay. I'm sorry. No. I, you know, <laughs> I miss him every day. <laughs> he was. Mark can tell you, he was like a big brother to Mark. Oh yeah? But anyway, um, it was a Sunday afternoon, and they lived right up here, right next to the interstate, Mom and Dad did, and somebody had a flat tire on the interstate, and my dad grabbed his tools. Oh. So yeah, I'm pretty thankful that, that they were able to. It was important to, to Dad to give us a chance to farm. Yeah. So anyway, we farm a little over 2,000 acres. Wow. So it's, and most of it's rented. I have 27 landowners. Wow, oh wow, okay. You know, several smaller farms. And, you know, this particular lady here, she's got 45 acres. Okay. Uh, All right, so that was really, really cool. Yeah, that was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, so. And I wasn't even on the fun track. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't go. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Is that the noise it made? <laughs> it's just like it's just like Cookie Monster. <laughs> <laughs> and soybeans are dirty. Yeah. But it was really cool. The the teeth are going down and they're picking everything up and then the sickles are <laughs> and it's just cutting everything, but it was really, really cool. It takes 12 seconds from the machine to cut the plant, 
and like dissect it, like pull it apart, pull the beans, whatever. It kind of works like a like a gold panning trommel would, mm -hmm. and it, with the weight and everything, and get the beans into the hopper. Twelve seconds between cut and hopper, and the whole time it's computer monitored. It tells him how much moisture is in the beans, where he is on his on his field, what the yield was in that area. I'm totally, totally cool. There is so much computer technology involved in agriculture that I didn't even know existed. Data on data on data. Yeah, data. data on data on data. I said, do you ever get bored in here? Because they're in there by themselves. Mm. So I asked him, I said, do you ever get bored in here? He goes, listen, I tell my wife all the time, if I have a day when I get bored by myself in the combine, that is an amazing day. That means <laughs> everything went right. I bet. He said, everything goes right if I'm bored. He said, I don't even listen to the radio because I'm watching this monitor, I'm watching this monitor. And once he's going in a straight line, he can turn the combine on to to like just drive straight mm -hmm. via, via satellite. Also autopilot, yeah. Right. Ryan was saying the same thing on their tractor. So he can drive it straight. I mean, when he gets to the end of the row, he's still got to turn around, but like a beep goes off in the tractor, like in the combine to let him know he's getting to the end. Because, and he said, it's not like autopilot, I'm not working. He goes, it's it, all it's doing is the it's driving just doing the steering, for him. Yeah. So that- Keeping him on a straight right, line. Right, keeping him on the straight line so that he can monitor all of these things. Like we hit a brick because it was underneath the soybeans. But he knew that we hit that brick because you don't hear ting right. like you would with like metal on metal. You're inside the machine and it's working and it's doing all these things. So he hit this brick and he knew we hit a brick immediately and that he broke a sickle because he was watching and monitoring Every all other. of the other things. Like he's watching his blades. He's watching the watching the sickles cut. He's watching the forks go down into the ground. Like he's able to monitor all of those things because he's not focused on keeping the machine going straight. Yeah, there are a lot of computers. Like we had three screens in our tractor. Just so like, cool. And we could watch where you guys were in the field and like know when we had to come around to offload you right. guys. And, and how much you have in rig. before you have to dump yeah, into the... Yeah, a lot of technology. So like I said, it's so much technology that it's I It's not just like tractors driving and dropping seeds and then coming no. back and scooping it up. There's a lot that no. goes on on that farm. And, and like science on science on science, like you said, data, yeah. data, 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 data. Like there's just so much involved in it, but it was really, really awesome. And, and he was great. He yeah. was just great to talk to and he, and you know, he liked and loved sharing the story of farming, which is, mm -hmm. is really, really cool. It was actually cool. cool. I had a lot of fun hanging out there. Yeah. So thank you very much, Bill and Blake and Ryan. We yeah. It was had a really great awesome. time. And big thanks to Mark for giving setting that up for us. Cecilia and giving us, giving Bill a call and setting it up. Yeah, because that was super, super cool. And I might come back and work for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go hang out with Mark while you're working on the farm. <laughs> so we left Mark and Celia's house in Illinois. We are headed eastbound back towards Hershey, Pennsylvania. But in route, we made a stop at Keith and Jean Ellen's house in Indiana, who we met down when we were in Florida, and then they came and visited us when we were in Nashville. So uh, we came to stop and see them at their place. And while we were here, we decided that we wanted to come up and see the Indiana Dunes National Park. So we just stopped at the visitor center and we got our map and we were driving down the road and Doug missed a turn. So, um, it's not my fault. The National Park Service and the state got together and made this intersection. For real. For real. The state park is like within the national park. And state government, federal government doing things hand in hand. No possible way anything stupid about it. <laughs> you have to make this right. I know that now. <laughs> oh boy. It's a little windy at Lake Michigan. But in case you've never seen the Great Lakes before like we haven't, that's what they look like. It looks like an ocean, but in the middle of the country. Near Chicago. And Gary. Who's Gary? <laughs> My boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> Alright, well, we promised the dog she could run on the beach, so. She's very excited. She does think it smells wrong though. It's <laughs> But mom, we're at the beach. Yeah, that's exactly what just happened. Yeah, this beach smells wrong. There's no salt in There's there. There's none. <laughs> Chicago doesn't look bad from here. No. I mean, this is close enough. It's as close as I need to be. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> she keeps stopping and smelling everything. Is that right? <laughs> as far as she knows, we're home. We're on a beach. <laughs> Well, we touched the Pacific, we've touched a glacier. I think we have to touch a Great Lake now. Yeah, yeah, I have to, I have to agree. It's gonna be really freaking cold. You think? Like, like colder than the glacier. Maybe not. Maybe. I'm not getting any closer. The Great Lakes have to come to me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, it's I would like you get so used to what salt water feels yeah, like. That, that just was, feels like a lake. <laughs> yeah. Dear Indiana, your ocean feels wrong. <laughs> also, if any of you come to the Jersey Shore, it's gonna feel really weird when you get in the water. <laughs> this is so funny. That was so strange. It was. You look at it and you expect <laughs> it, should, it to be it, an ocean. Yeah, it should feel like ocean water, but it it just, doesn't. It just feels like the kitchen sink. I bet you sink. Like a rock. <laughs> I'm not fat enough to float in fresh water yet. <laughs> no. Nor am I fat enough for the 40 degrees and 20 mile an hour winds. No, so. it's really cold. Yeah, I'm getting back in the truck. You two can run really on the beach. Cold. <laughs> All right, so we are clearly just going to completely strike out on stuff being abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think food carts constitute us abandoned. <laughs> no. <laughs> Recognize the prison? <laughs> it's the one Andy broke out of in Shawshank Redemption. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's Halloween, so there's food trucks and employees and tour guides and fencing. So, like, we would have to break into prison. Which, which I'm not doing. No. I'm not. I'm not doing that. No. I've never tried to break into a prison. No. I'm not going to start now. No. But now I can say... I've seen the prison that Andy broke out of. And I don't have to climb through the sewer pipe to get out of here. That's right. It's a really cool looking building though. It is a cool looking building. It looks like a big huge castle. Yeah. All right, so eastward we go. Eastward we go. So this is about as ghost town as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> There's not even houses. What, we saw three houses yeah. total here. Yeah, the, the internet says there's a total of 10 people that still live here. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, there's there's steps up to what used to be a house. A house. Yeah. As the houses have gone vacant, they've been demolished, which is like a safety concern because the whole town is on fire from below. Yeah. There was a coal mine in Centralia, Pennsylvania, um, and the town dump used to get lit on fire to, I guess, kind of get rid of all the stuff in the dump and one year they did that and it spread into the coal mine underground yeah and it wasn't discovered for almost 10 years yeah and it's been burning ever since and as people moved out they demolished the houses like right now we're driving down main street and there's a sidewalk there's a sidewalk but you can't tell there's a stop sign on the end of a street no one drives down it's crazy to see how many lives and livelihoods were displaced by... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, the the state highway, um, yeah, they 61, had... they diverted around... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the graffiti highway. They cut it and moved it. <laughs> moved, they moved the whole highway. <clears throat> um, and now it's been, since COVID started, in April 2020, they covered the graffiti highway with um, mounds of dirt. So we... We were out there a little bit. We were able to walk on it a little bit. You can kind of walk around it. They didn't like cover it, cover it. Yeah, but, if uh, you do go there, don't stop in town because you're not allowed to park. No, it's no parking. On most of the streets here in town. But there is a section you can find if you do your homework and still see some of the graffiti. And some of it is like artwork. But... Right, right. Some of it really is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the whole thing was diverted. And they say before it was covered that you could that back on that section of 61 on the graffiti highway was where you could really see a lot of the destruction. Like we're driving down main street here. It just looks like a dead end street. Like it doesn't, it doesn't look like it ever used to be anything. Mother nature has taken back over and there's lots of trees and grasses and everything else growing all over the place. But back on the highway that that's where you were able to see like the sinkholes and, and the, 
pavement all torn up and everything from the fire, but there's no access to that now. Nope. <laughs> but it is, in fact, a modern day abandoned town. Ghost Town. Ghost Town 101. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, 2022. <laughs> yeah. But the gang is just about at Hershey, and we've got a hour ride there till we get there. So we're gonna go back, hook up the camper, and head over to Hershey and go do some camping. Right. Instead so of camping, camping, not living. Yeah, in the camping, RV. camping, not RV living. Yeah. We're gonna do some camping, prepared. some beer drinking, some hanging out, too much food eating. Yeah. Like it's gonna be super excited to see everybody. Yeah, she gets pork roll <laughs> <laughs> and, and bacon. <laughs> but. Well, we finally made it to Hershey, and this weekend they are doing their big Halloween camp out. And this is where our group of camper friends all gets together for one last blowout of the season. The number of campsites that we take over at this campground is insane. Yeah, it's insane like half of the campground. We have that whole side of the playground, both sides of this street, both sides of that street. They're more up on the hill. There's people that rent cabins because they don't have a camper. This it gets is a big bigger one. and bigger every year. We are over 50 sites now. Mm -hmm. Over 50 sites. And this road is a dead end, so our buddy Adam has his camper all the way down the end and he's going to turn this whole road into a haunted attraction. That's right. For trick or treating. <laughs> so we're gonna go get started on transforming this into, into the spookiest treat in Hershey Park Camp. <laughs> what we got? Feet. We got feet. We got Freddy. We did get Freddy. Awesome. That's a nice easy one to put together. <laughs> we're gonna turn this into a union job like all the chiefs over there who are standing around putting together. Yeah, I mean one. usually what is that? <laughs> What is that? Why does it take four chiefs, four past chiefs, to put together one thing? They forgot what it's like to work. <laughs> so we finished putting Freddy together. The four chiefs are still working. Four chiefs are still working. They don't even have his pants up. Second pair, second pair of pants. So we win. We got a beer first. We're gonna go sit down. We're done. Yeah, we're done. High five. Good job. <laughs> so now the score is grunts two, chiefs, chiefs zero. zero. We are four down. One more is Cinco de Mayo. That's the sensor. They can walk up. Decorations are all set up. Got the spooky street ready to go. Sun's almost down, so it's almost trick or treat and, and judging time. But for now, we're gonna go do a seafood boil because you know how we roll by now. So we got steaks on the fire, big old seafood boil we're gonna do. And then we're gonna try and scare a bunch of kids. Should be a fun night. All right, so we only took third in the site decoration contest somehow. So disappointing. Yeah. I don't know how that happens. I don't know, because I think Adam bought like everything at Spirit <laughs> Halloween. So <laughs> a lot of fun though, got to see everybody. So that was cool. Um, but the leaves are starting to change color and fall on the ground. So we are going to start heading south because it's starting to get chilly here. Nice warmer weather. Yep. Head down to South Florida, spend the winter down there and kind of hibernate in the sun because that's more fun than staying up here in the snow. That's right. And on the way down, we're going to stop and see our friends, Chris and Courtney and Mooch Doc at their place for a while. Head down to my best friend Buck's house. You know, septic problem. Yeah. 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 yeah back we're, there. We're not going to back on the phone. Okay. Time. All right. So, Sounds good. <laughs> but, uh, we are going to. Do some more how-to videos over our winter break from our traveling and do some more upgrades to the camper and stuff like that so you guys are going to see some of those videos popping up so and then we're hoping to head southwest after that yes. so of the next time you guys see us other than the how-to's and stuff um that should be the direction we're going yeah that should be fun a lot of fun i know i can't wait to get out there i'm really excited for the desert <laughs> <laughs> who'd have thought <laughs> but we will see you guys shortly so in the meantime, where's your next interstate adventure? <laughs>